Matthew 24. Now, do you remember we just finished last time going through the seven events? And this is nothing. This is classic dispensational theology that the next big prophesied event in the scripture that's real clear is the sudden harpazo, the snatching away, the rapture, which is immediately followed by the, the examination of the believer's works, which we call the judgment or the bema seat of Christ. So number one, rapture. Number two, the bema seat of Christ. That plunges the world, the, the rapture, takes out the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit, which is through the church, as you just saw through our missionaries, around the world, believers meet, and they have a, an effect, a, a preserving effect, but that launches very soon into, with the church's removal, into the time called the tribulation. Actually, the Bible calls it the time of Jacob's trouble because the tribulation is focused toward the Jewish people to bring them ultimately to the point where they, as in Zechariah 12, 13, 14, look up at the second coming, which is the fourth event, rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, and the tribulation. The fourth event is the second coming. And just as Jesus Christ uh, is, is in the air, the, the world is ready to consume at last the final holocaust of Jewish people, and they look up upon him uh, whom they pierced, and they look on Jesus as their Messiah, and they are turning in faith to him, and he rescues them at the second coming. And that brings in Christ sitting on the throne of his, as we're going to sing soon at Christmas, his father David. You know, that's in the, the great uh, Handel's Messiah. He finally gets to sit on the throne. And the millennium is, is Psalm 2, where Jesus rules with a rod of iron. And where the earth is under his uh, theocratic rule, as it were. And, and it's interesting, if they're bad, it won't rain on their area. And every Every year, they stream through this massive millennial temple where all of the gospel is, is portrayed, and they actually go back. It appears they go back to sacrifices because in the Old Testament, sacrifices pointed forward to Christ, and it appears in the millennium, sacrifices point back to Christ, and it's used as a, as a tool to explain the gospel. But most of the world, as we know if you read, don't believe and by the end of the millennium, after a thousand years, the earth is full of people like the sands of the seashore. And Satan is released from his thousand-year captivity in the abyss. And he quickly goes out and deceives the whole world. And the whole world starts marching again. You know, it's kind of like uh, a repeat of the tribulation. The whole world starts marching again on the city of Jerusalem where God is enthroned in the temple and, and all the message of God. And as they're marching, the Lord just says, enough's enough, and he consumes them all, and we go into the great white throne, the sixth event before of the seven, and that's the final judgment, the ultimate judgment. We're in Revelation 20, and then 21 and 22 is heaven. So there, we just covered all of prophecy. Probably the most fascinating part, though, is that event called the second coming. In the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus wrote as a guide. It's actually a tribulation guide. Uh, it, it, it's preparation for the tribulation, and there's a lot to be learned. And, and why I find it very, very um, helpful in my spiritual life is that it's a guide for how you go through great affliction and adversity for the gospel and so it's a tribulation preparation guide which we can learn from because we we are going to all who are godly in christ jesus will suffer so there's a lot to be learned there but the, the real answer that jesus did if you look at the third verse is this the disciple says tell us what uh, when these things will be matthew 24 3 and here it is what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And what Jesus says is it's not just one sign. It's a whole bunch of trends. And by the time you get to verse 8, he says these things are the beginning of sorrows. And then zip on down to verse 33. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 33, when you see all these things, know it is near at the door. So, so these signs, these trends, are these, these, these prophesied events that are going to be starting in a small way and then they're going to be getting stronger and stronger, like Jesus called them, the beginning of sorrows. 
Uh, they are, as it says in verse 8, that, that beginning of sorrows, actually that's the, the word that's used for birth pangs. And so it's kind of like little birth pangs, and they're getting stronger and stronger, and the contractions get harder and closer together and last longer. And those are the signs that Jesus Christ is coming. And that's why it says in verse 34, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Jesus said that this is my prophetic plan for the future. So if we were to distill down all of Matthew 24 and all of the scriptures that attach to it, we could say this, that the list of biblical signs of Christ's return will not be full-blown until the tribulation time. And so there are no signs for the rapture. These, are, these signs will not be experienced in their fullness until they're actually unfolded in the tribulation. But each of these signs that Jesus describes were captured by the apostles and the prophets between 2,000 years ago and 3,500 years ago. There hasn't been any new revelation. I mean, we're dealing with old stuff here that God revealed a long time ago. 2,000 years ago, in the time of Christ, all the way back to the time of Moses, 3,500 years ago. All of these things were written down by the prophets way back then and the apostles more recently. But the Bible captured these as specific events that would signal the end of days. In fact, that's what the Lord calls it. In fact, in the moment we're going to Daniel, he said, this is how you're going to know it's the end. And, and Jesus signaled that the end of days, well, actually he called it these last days. The last days began at the cross. But the end of days is a future time that is signaled by these, these trends that we see. The list of the biblical signs of Christ's return will not be full-blown until the midst of the great tribulation. Each of these signs of his return, Jesus said, are just the beginning. That's why I call them trends. That's why it says in, in verse 8, all these are just the beginning. They're just the start of a trend that's going to happen. And these trends are speeding up. The last seconds of the countdown clock of Christ's return are clicking down. Every day the prophetic picture that Christ painted grows clearer. And I know that because I have a, 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 quite a long collection of books on prophecy, and some of them are fascinating. Uh, men got up and preached that Mussolini was the Antichrist. And I mean, their books were selling like hotcakes, especially during World War II. Right after he died, it wasn't good sales. But uh, during that time, it was just unbelievable. And that's the danger of trying to correlate every current event. I remember when Gorbachev came up. Do you remember? The mark on his forehead, right? Yeah, that's the sign, uh, you know, uh, that he's, you know, the beast or something. And, and it's just people are always, and that's the same as when Social Security numbers were required and, and the barcodes started. I mean, there were Christians that wouldn't buy stuff with barcodes on them. And, and I mean... In fact, where we came from in Oklahoma, there's a whole group of lawyers that help Christians never get a social security number because they don't, they don't want to have any identifying mark. And I think it's wonderful, and, and I think it's very helpful for the lawyers at least, and uh, that, that, that help them. But, but you know what I mean? There's, there's always this kind of we're, we're trying to almost like hold it back from happening, and, and, and we're trying to impede as if you can impede um, the Lord's plan for the end. But every day in all of history, if you examine it, we are the only generation that has seen everything that Jesus literally said would be happening, happening in a small scale in our time. And, and what I mean by that, I'm going to show you. Because these events, Jesus said, would not suddenly appear. He said rather they would be a trend that would be amplified and strengthened until it became an overwhelming event like a birth. And now that, that we've seen those seven big events, I want to show you the kind of the smaller view of just the signs Jesus said would be the signs of his coming.